So in this video, we're going to cover the de Broglie hypothesis and how to find the wavelength of matter. And we are going to cover um, how to find the velocity of an electron that's been accelerated through a potential difference. Okay, so the de Broglie hypothesis is that, well, what, what happened was de Broglie saw that Einstein said that, oh, light is both a wave and a particle. And de Broglie said, well, if light can be a wave and a particle, why can't particles of matter be a wave? And he said that if this is true, then the wavelength of that matter is equal to Planck's constant over the momentum. Or, if we want to write momentum a different way, mass times velocity. Okay? So the wavelength of matter is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum. So what does that mean? Does that mean all matter is a wave? Yes, it does. So what if we think about a baseball? If it, can a baseball be a wave? So if we use de Broglie's equation, um, we can see if a baseball is indeed a wave, how big the wavelength of this baseball would be. So, we start with this equation up here, which says that the wavelength of my baseball is equal to Planck's constant over the mass times the velocity of the baseball, the momentum. So, if I take Planck's constant, which is 6.63 .6 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, and I divide it by the velocity of our baseball, which is given in the problem, 12 meters per second. And the mass of the baseball, which is given in the problem, 0 0.45 kilograms. I find that the wavelength of a baseball is really, really small. It's 1.23 times 10 to the minus 34 meters. So the wavelength of this baseball is really, really small, considering that the radius of an, or the diameter of an atom is about 10 to the minus 10. So this is a really, really small wavelength, so we wouldn't really experience this in our day-to-day -day lives. So we know that if we look at the wavelength of something massive, like a baseball or a human being or a car, we see that we get really small wavelengths according to this equation, the de Broglie equation. So, and that's because we're dividing this really, really small number, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, by a big number, 0.45, or 10 kilograms, or 100 kilograms, whatever. So, large objects are always going to give us a small um, wavelength, what we probably wouldn't experience in our day-to-day -day life. What if we look at something small, like an electron? How would its wavelength look? Or be predicted according to the de Broglie equation? So, what I want to do is I want to figure out what the wavelength is for an electron accelerated through a potential difference of 54 volts. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what the voltage is. What the voltage is. What the, or what the velocity of this is of this electron is. And we can find that because we know that we're accelerating it through a potential difference of 54 volts. And we know that if we do that, that the electrical potential energy that we're giving this electron will equal the kinetic energy after it's been accelerated. So we know that electrical potential energy is equal to voltage times charge and in this case, we have the charge of an electron. And in the case of kinetic energy, it's equal to 1 half m times velocity squared. Right? So we can solve for velocity here and find our velocity of our electron. And then we're on our way to finding the wavelength. So if I take voltage times the charge of an electron, I'm move some things around using algebra and I get 
that the velocity is going to equal this. So let's see, 2 times my voltage, 54 volts, times the charge of an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, it's a little longer, divided by the mass of an electron, which is given in my physics data book, or in the problem over here, 9111 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And I solve this, and I find that my velocity is equal to... I get 4.4 times 10 to the, m to the sixth meters per second. So this electron's really moving. So if the electron's moving that quickly, what is its wavelength? So we can use the de Broglie wavelength equation to find that. So remember that wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum, the mass times the velocity. And I can say that 6.63 times 10 to the minus 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds divided by the mass uh, which was given before 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms times uh, my velocity which is 4.4 times 10 to the sixth meters per second I can solve this and I get 1.67 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, which is about on the order of the diameter of the atom. And it is something we will experience uh, when we make experimental measurements of electrons at small levels. So that's pretty cool. Um, then we'll talk about how this was actually proven to be correct in the next video. That's it.